Here's a question. Do you believe in heaven? Various polls find that somewhere around 80% of Americans do. But a Harvard-trained brain surgeon wasn't so sure until he spent a week in a coma and came out with an incredible description of the afterlife. My co-anchor Terry Moran has a story. A mild afternoon in Lynchburg, Virginia, and Eben and Holly Alexander are at a high school soccer game cheering on their 14-year-old son, Bond. They are a perfectly ordinary American family with an extraordinary story. They have been touched by a medical miracle and maybe more. I mean, it was impossible after impossible after impossible. Eben Alexander, a Harvard-trained neurosurgeon who was a skeptic when it came to religion, survived a near-death experience, and he now carries the memory of what he says was a journey to heaven, a journey that all his scientific training cannot explain. On November 10th, 2008, Eben awoke with a searing headache. When his wife Holly checked in on him, he was having a tremendous seizure. And I said, say something. And he didn't say anything, so I called 911. Eben was rushed to the hospital where he worked as a neurosurgeon. The only word we could truly make out was help. And the rest of his verbalization was purely uh, screaming. Eben Alexander had been stricken with an extremely rare and virulent E. coli meningitis infection that was ravaging his brain, plunging him into a coma. I mean, I was trying to die. In fact, doctors gave him almost no chance to live and told his family if he did survive, he'd be brain damaged for the rest of his life. His eyes were just off and cocked. <laughs> it was just like no one was there. Eben believes Holly is right. He wasn't there. Did you go to heaven? Yes. I mean, in, in every sense of the word, that's what my what my experience showed me. His first recollection, he says, was being a speck of pure awareness in a dark and murky underworld. And then I was rescued by this beautiful spinning white light that had a, a melody, indescribably beautiful melody with it, that opened up in, into a bright valley. Just an incredible, rich, ultra-real world. Uh, of indescribable complexity. God was there, he says, and he encountered him through an orb of brilliant light. He soared on the wing of a butterfly with a beautiful young woman as his companion, and the young woman gave him a message to take back from heaven. You are loved, you are cherished, there's nothing you have to fear, there's nothing you can do wrong. It's a beautiful vision, but heaven? A lot of people are gonna say, Doctor, it was a hallucination. Your brain got zapped by this disease, all the wires got crossed, and you saw a girl on a butterfly wing and you were spinning up in a melody. I know this was not a hallucination, not a dream, not what we call a confabulation. I know that it really occurred and I know it occurred outside of my brain. So basically... Uh, the whole but how? How can he even suggest that, much less claim that his experience is proof of heaven, as he's called his new book? He showed us his brain scan. It wasn't leaving any part of my uh, cortex unaffected. So your conclusion is because all of this outer area, which is the higher functioning, was covered with the infection, what you experienced in the coma wasn't part of the brain. Right. Many neuroscientists are deeply skeptical of Evans' claims, arguing his brain must have produced his vision somehow, most likely as he came out of coma. But something else happened. After he recovered, Eben, who was adopted, saw a picture of a sister from his biological family who died years ago, a woman he never knew. And I knew who my guardian angel was on the butterfly wing. It was the most profound experience I've ever had in this life. Your sister, by birth, and from a family that you didn't know because you were adopted, who died several years ago, who you had never met, you saw while you were in coma. Yes. And that was the key. That explained everything. Sounds good, that's for sure. Dinner time at the Alexander home. Come, Lord Jesus, our guest to be. They were not a particularly religious family before Eben's coma. He was a skeptic. Not anymore. This proves 
that our, our soul, our consciousness, our uh, spirit doesn't depend on the existence of the brain and body at all and easily is actually freed up to a much higher state of knowing when it's freed from this body.